the hell is that? This video is about making meaning of contemporary art. First, what's the difference between contemporary and modern art? While we use the word modern to mean something up to date or new, in the art world, it actually means a certain time period. So art from the middle of the 20th century. And the word contemporary art in the art world is art that's from the current moment and about 50 years before that. Definition doesn't mean anything if you're just a general person looking at art, but I think it's really helpful because it reminds you that we are looking at stuff that's fairly new and we're all making meaning of it. And a lot of people say, like, how do you know this is going to be important in the future? We don't. We're taking a very good guess, but we don't know. And so how does the art world take that very good guess? Well, they look at artists who are creating things that seem different and new. Let's look and compare these three artworks from the 1980s because it shows how innovation was really important. So in the 70s and 80s, Christo and Jean-Claude, an artist pair, were trying to create public art. For example, in 1980, they surrounded islands in Biscayne Bay with this pink fabric. And their goal for this artwork is that it's ephemeral. It's meant to end. So it's an experience. And now we're really used to pop-ups, but back in the 1970s when they were innovating this, it was somewhat uncommon. Starting in 1975, they had this plan to put these gates in Central Park. The gates were meant to move as you walked along the pathways. Given all the red tape, it took them 26 years to install this artwork. It was up in New York City for three weeks and then taken down and most of the material was then recycled. But Christo's work is a great emblem of one major theme in contemporary art, ephemerality and experience. It isn't about the thing, but the fact that you've created something viewers can experience together. And this idea of ephemerality in time-based artworks can be seen in many contemporary artists, including this artist Ai Weiwei, who installed millions of sunflower seeds for a limited time at the Tate Modern. Or the artist Felix Gonzalez Torres, who installed a pile of candy in a gallery in honor of his deceased boyfriend. The candy is meant to be taken just as he has left this mortal coil. At the same time that Cristo and Jean-Claude were installing those islands, Jean-Michel Basquiat was painting in New York City. This is Basquiat's Horn Players from 1983, showing Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. Basquiat draws from many different sources, including street art, to create this composition. But he was also looking at artists like Picasso, and so here you can see him compared to a cubist work by Picasso. And in this way, Basquiat is a really typical contemporary painter. Contemporary painting is about blending your own identity, in this case, Basquiat's Haitian identity, your local culture, in this case, his graffiti culture, and then art history. So he is building on masters, but making it completely his own. Song Sunam can be seen in a similar way. Created in 1979, Summer Trees is supposed to blend the black and white ink painting traditional in Korea with contemporary abstraction, like drip paintings by Morris Lewis. Joan Quick to See is a Native American painter and artist whose work gives voice to Native American stories. She creates this image, Trade, created on the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival in North America. She combines the image of a canoe with trinkets, highlighting the bad faith with which the Europeans traded with Native Americans. Finally, Maya Lin's installation for the Vietnam War Memorial brings up the last big trend that you should see in contemporary art. Reconsider everything. Nothing is sacred in terms of media, format. Lynn was still a student when she created this work. Her goal was a very quiet monument, one that went below the ground and required introspection, rather than, say, the Washington Monument seen in the background in this image, which towers over viewers. And you see this trend in lots of contemporary art, like Faith Ringgold 1991 Dancing at the Louvre. She combines the great African-American tradition of quilt making with 
imagery and portraiture. Shirin Neshet takes the tradition of calligraphy and combines it with portraiture to create photographs. Ella Natsui uses recycled materials like foil and caps to create wall-sized installations. Overall, when you're looking at contemporary art, you should think, how is this artist connecting to things people have done? And how are they making it completely different? In what way is their voice individual, unique, and exciting?